Hello, this is Tony from Kate's Crafty Closet, and today I have this little beautiful high heel card. So, let me show you how we're going to make this. So, the first thing I have here is I die cut. This is for the inside of our card. This is a wonky stitch frame die from MFT, and this is some Nina 80 pound solo white classic crest cardstock, and that's going to be for the inside of our card. So, we'll put that to the side. And that's so we could write a message on it and all that. And the next thing I have here is this is the Ink on 3 Heels to You, the die set. This is a coordinating die. There is a stamp set that goes along with it. And as always, I will post all the products that I use today in the description box below for your convenience. So you can go back and look at it. So that is the die. So I'll push this to the side because I'm going to show you the things that I cut with it. So I went ahead and um, I die cut the high heel just using the coordinating die. I didn't use the stamp and I just die cut it using some of this flock transfer sheets from Decafoil. This is the black velvet one. So you have this. So it has a little bit of fluff to it. I think it's kind of cool. So that's why I decided to go ahead and use that flocking powder. So I die cut that out. And then the next thing I went ahead and did is like the some of the Tim Holtz ideology silver paper. Um, I die cut this frame, scallop frame. This is a Gina Marie die. So this is what we're going to use as well for the front of our card. And then I went ahead and die cut and stamped out the magnolia that comes with the stamp set, the heels to you stamp set, because we're going to use that as an adornment to our high heel. And as another piece of the card, I went ahead and die cut out of some 80 pound classic crest Nina solo white cardstock, this pink and main cloud frame. This is the larger one in the set. So we have that one as well. And then the th I went ahead and um, used some 100 pound Relic Collections cardstock that I picked up from Michaels. And I'm gonna use this as a side folding card, but I'm gonna do it in landscape. So this is gonna be four and a quarter by five and a half. So that's the first thing that we're going to go ahead and start off with. So, and we're gonna adhere down our clouds so we're just going to use your favorite adhesive i usually use art glitter glue but i think art glitter glue decided it's going to take a little summer vacay um and not um and not be found in the craft room so uh, i'll let you know when it's back from vacation so i'm just going to take some this is some ranger multimedia matte this is just as this is a good adhesive as well and it'll dry matte. So I'm just gonna put this basically on the four corners and a little bit in the middle because the weight of the layers on top of it will be plenty enough to keep it, you know, adhered down to our card panel. So here we're gonna come in with our card panel. Y'all know Tony um, never gets anything on his cards accurately straight close to being straight or ever straight and i'm okay with that because it's handmade uh so and i'm okay with that if it doesn't perfectly go on there so there you go we have that piece of it then we're going to go in i'm going to put that to the side and get off any straggling things hang around so we have this and i went ahead and used some this is some elizabeth crafts double-sided adhesive and put this on some white card stock and i die cut in that heels to you um dies there is a standalone die with the word beautiful on it so i went ahead and did some adhesive on the back so i wouldn't have to struggle with putting um liquid adhesive on the back of that so it already has adhesive one so i'm just gonna put it on there and i can curve that text i like that it doesn't have to be perfectly straight i can curve it and that's kind of the look i wanted to go for so here is our heel that we cut earlier and i just kind of at first i was going to do it like this and I'm like well the heel doesn't look grounded some because i want it right up against that stitch line down at the bottom so that's kind of where 
that's kind of what I'm going to do. So for this, I'm not going to use the multimedia mat because this is a little bit on the thin side and I don't want it to buckle or give me any issues. So I'm just taking some thin double sided tape that I probably picked up off of Amazon and somehow made it into my cart. So I'm just going to put a couple pieces on here and burnish it down really quickly. And like I can say if you want to use liquid adhesive, I normally would use my art glitter glue. But today we're going with some other forms of adhesive, which is okay. Because number one, it allows me to use stuff in my stash and lets me not so realize that, oh, I can make it through without my art glitter glue. I hate my mid in that, but I can. So. And we're going to do one last piece on the heel to make sure it goes down perfectly. And here comes the fun part. We're going to remove that release paper, which is absolutely so much fun. No, it's not. So I just use my tweezers. These are my reverse tweezers from EK Success because I can pull it and then I can grab it and pull it off and not have to use my fingers. Because um, sometimes my fingers don't want to grab it. So these come in handy. Does it always work? Nope. Would I like it to always work? Yes. But I'm just going to burnish that down really well and grab that release paper. So it's like, got to find what works for us. Like we all are individuals and what works for me may not work for you and, and vice versa. So I just improvise nine times out of ten. All right. So we have all of our release paper over there. Make sure there is no, nothing in our way. And before we put it down, we're just gonna lightly put it on here because, yeah, there we go. We're good, right? Perfectly good on that. So boom, we have that. So let's go ahead and put some 3D foam squares on there. Y'all know my favorite foam squares, right? to give it a little bit of um, dimension and bulk. And so we're gonna go ahead and add those onto our card panel. Well, not really the card panel, but you know what I'm talking about. And we got one set more. And like I said, these are just strips that I buy from the Dollar Tree when I see them. And I'm gonna cut the last two and half so I can um, kind of fit them inside of the uh, the rest of the uh, foam squares all right and lastly we'll put this one right there on that edge and we're gonna put that to the side and we're gonna bring in our magnolia and the first thing we're going to do is kind of, we're going to give it a little bit of color. Magnolias in reality, they're white with a yellow center. And But today we're going to make it, we're going to use a gray Copic and we're going to use a yellow Copic. So the first thing I'm going to use is a C1. This is a cool gray, which is a very light gray. So we're going to go with that. And I'm going to use the brush tip. And basically you should know that you're not supposed to color with the tip of the marker. You're supposed to really color with the side of it. But what I'm really going to go do is like these little areas that's kind of already like it looks like it, it needs to be shaded. That's where I'm going to put in my gray. If you go outside that line, don't stress about it. If I'm not going to stress about it, neither are you. I'm giving you the permission not to stress if you color outside the line of that little shady area, right? Because in nature... It's not perfect. It doesn't stay in the line, right? So I'm just making sure that I'm not missing any of those little shaded areas. Like I said, this is a cool gray. So remember, it's going to be light because that's the look I'm going to go for. Because once it soaks into the paper, it's going to become even more lighter than what it is. But like I said, this is just give it a little bit of shading and for me to start using my Copic markers too. Next, I'm going to use Y02 Canary Yellow. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to dab on there because it's not a huge center and I don't want it to bleed too much 
outside the line. So that's perfect. So I could not find my little balm that you know you do you shape your flowers with um, in the crafty world. So I did a little improvisation. Improvisation. I can't even pronounce it right. I improvised. How about that? So that's okay. We were just having a little little struggle there with that. So I actually went ahead and I for some reason this just popped up in my little crafty speck, it's a just it's a colored pencil, but it's a smooth rounded edge. And basically that's all I did was use that to break up the fibers in the uh, cardstock. So essentially you're gonna you want to break the fibers up. And yes, you're gonna get little bitty breaks in it. You're gonna see like cracks maybe with your cardstock depending on what you use but that's okay because that's going to give you more of an organic look but as you continue to work this pencil and you, you notice how it's starting to buckle up on me it's starting to give me a little bit of 3d dimension it's like i'm not looking for a huge dimension and if you want to help it along the way you can most certainly go ahead and grab your bone folder curl them leaves up but for me i found this to be this worked really well i just i didn't think it would but i'm like okay i don't know where my little stylus is you know to push it in but i just used a, a mouse pad that's sitting right here next to my computer and i just continued to do it and go in the center and just continue out on the leaves and you see how i'm getting a little bit the breaking up of the fibers but that's okay because i just look at it as in nature that is the texture of the leaf right so i think i'm totally fine and okay with what i just went ahead and did so now i'm going to bring back in my card panel and i'm going to go ahead and peel off the backings of our um foam squares here i'm sorry if i'm out of the camera just pulling off the release paper which I think should be on the top 10 of most fun things to do when it comes to crafting no it's not but it's okay it's one of those necessary things that we must do okay a couple more pieces and then we will be done with that so two more final countdown okay and then we have that and this part like you try to want to get this on here as good as you possibly can because it's not much of a window in the center of this and because it's a foam square i try to put it on there as lightly as possible because they like to grab really quickly all right so there we go i'm good i'm good with that okay and go with that. So we're gonna go back to our, our little flower, but before we do that, let's go ahead and put um, the uh, inside of our card. And I'm gonna go ahead and use some more of that um, double-sided adhesive because my art glitter glue is on vacation. I sure hope my art glitter glue is somewhere fun and it brings me back a souvenir, like, and not a t-shirt. Because I can make one of those with my Cricut, right? Okay. A couple more pieces. And then we'll call this one done once we do release paper. If you haven't figured it out, I'm not a fan of pulling off release paper. But I'll be okay. Just burnishing it down. And we're going to grab our reverse tweezers and we're going to hopefully get that release paper to come up quicker rather than later or that's supposed to be sooner rather than later all right one more two more three more pieces all right two more there we go that's what i'm talking about so now we're cooking with grease okay then we're just going to go ahead and bring back in that car stock and make sure that we are on the right side and because lord knows we do not want to 
turn that over and realize, well, that's not a good thing. I put that on the wrong one. So that's where we can write our, our little message. And the stamp, I stamped this in the Ink on 3 Blackout ink. So the final thing we put, before we put that on there, you know, if you know Tony and you watch some of my videos or my YouTube, or my Facebook lives or even with my uh, periscopes I like liquid pixie dust this is an ink on three product as well this is like I love this stuff just make sure you shake it well before each use but I went ahead and put some in a little bit of palette over here and add a little bit of water in. and I'm gonna go in with my uh, a paintbrush just as just a inexpensive paintbrush and I'm going to liquid pixie dust this little bad boy up and don't be afraid to go outside the lines. This is definitely not going to react with the, my uh, Ink on 3 Blackout ink. And it's not going to react with my uh, Copic alcohol markers. So now we're going to go grab a little bitty, a little dab will do of the multi matte medium from Ranger. And we're just going to put a little dab right here in the center of our Magnolia. All right, and this stuff is pretty, 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 pretty strong. Um, it dries matte, thank goodness, because I just dropped it. And place your magnolia where you want to. And I'm just going to grab, I'm just going to push it in, just so it grabs and have a moment. You have a moment if you don't like it where it is. And like I said, the possibilities are endless, Jack. Whoever thought... I know what you're doing right now. You're probably thinking, what other coordinating die can I just make a card out of and die cut without having to worry about stamping it and lining it up? You'd be surprised what you can use out there. So go ahead and take a look at your stamps and coordinating dies. It's like, hmm, what can I do? And I love to see what you make over over my Facebook group. All the links to my social media will be in the description box below as well, too. Um, make sure you hashtag Kate's Crafted Closet on social media as well. That way I can see what you're creating. So I want to thank everyone for joining me today. And again... Check out the description box below for all the social media links as well as all the products that I used in today's video. And y'all have a crafty day, y'all.